favela. A bigger and a better new town to be built right here, right where we're standing, in place of the old. She doesn't want to be with me. That's what's making her sick. She's not sick. She's having a baby. It's not too late, you know, for you and me to be together. What? You've won the pools. Ten thousand pounds. This new town, Sean, it's an absolute gold mine. All they have to do to secure a deposit for a brand new house is hand me the deeds to their old property and they'll be sitting on a small fortune. This was Mam's house. I don't want a new one. Done! I'm not listening to another word. Come on, You oh. must come now! Uh, look at him now. They have to make sure that the tunnel is absolutely safe first. I have to get back there. There are formalities to complete. I had a lot of time to think down the mine, Carmine. You deserve better than this life I've given you, and I'm going to make it up to you, I promise. I've got you. That's all that matters, Prem. This is all his fault, isn't it? Who? Dad. I ate him. Dad. Leave him to me, Prem. I don't want him thinking like that, not on top of everything else he's going through. He doesn't. He's just lashing out. I think we both know that. You didn't speak to me for weeks when Rani died. But it passes all that anger. It'll be the same for him, and then he'll heal. Like we did. Is this my fault? What? What happened to Griffiths? What makes you say that? He wouldn't have been down that mine if I hadn't given him those pills. Pills that you practically begged me to give him. Griffiths rather did the begging himself from what you told me. It was an accident, Robert. A simple, tragic accident. Yes, but that's not the point. You can't blame yourself for any of it. He was only down there because of me. And if you'd stopped him working, and he'd been out in the village and been hit by a truck, that would have been your fault too, would it? No, of course not. No. These things, Robert, are just... What? Acts of God? In a manner of speaking, yes. Excuse me. They're still working on the supports. Any idea how much longer they'll be? I think that rather depends. Depends on what? Whether they find any more explosives. What? The tunnel didn't collapse all by itself. Somebody blew it up. Henry! This wasn't supposed to happen, Basil. A man was not supposed to die. We're in trouble here, real trouble. Actually, you're the one in trouble. You being the one who planted the device. Oh, you say so? I rather think that's your word against mine, don't you? What are you saying? I'm saying don't panic, keep your mouth shut, and then maybe, just maybe, I won't throw you to the wolves. They're not going to be content with just checking for a few supports now, you know. They'll go over that whole mine with a fine tooth comb. Possibly. How can you be so calm about this? And then they'll start looking for the person or persons responsible, and we all know who that is, don't we? Yes, me and you. And they'll know too. Once you tell them who you saw making off with the dynamite from the store. Tough and I'll let. Do that, and everything will be fine. 
don't, and you'll be the first person to suffer the consequences. I'll make absolutely sure of it. I can't believe somebody would do something like this. Basil Thomas said it himself. First the Newton model, then the telephone kiosk. What will Dav and Alec do next? Dav and Alec? Singing silly songs, marching around with banners, yes, but you seriously think they're capable of doing something like this? I don't know what to think, Prem. Not anymore. Unless the God's honest truth. Winston, pass me the other side. Thanks, boy. Rescue boys found this, sir. Uh... It's a wens. Yes. If I could find out where those explosives came from, it would be a start. I've got to check the stores again. You killed Owen Griffiths! No one. And why do it in the first place? Why blow up that mine anyway? A business matter. It doesn't concern you. Business? What sort of business? My sort. No one else's. Not when everyone finds out what you've done. Oh, we'll be long gone before then. Long gone? This is our home now. We've made plans. The new town. There's no new town, is there? I made you a promise, too, remember? When you turned up at my doorstep, in a blind panic, about to be struck off, nowhere to go, no one to turn to, I promised I'd look after you, and I did. And that's all that matters. My promise to you. Brother to brother. You just <laughs> sit here. I've got to go and see some people. And in a few hours, when I return, it'll all be over. <gasps> no one's going to believe you weren't a part of this too, Robert. You're in this up to your neck as well. Absolutely awful. Poor, poor Dan. I'll have to cancel his paper. I wish we could all get in that time machine on the telly and go back to how everything was. What time machine? And the doctors. What doctor? Not what? Who? Oh, I'm not in the mood for this, Kerry. I'm really not. I can't believe it. I simply can't believe it. I'll have to cancel his pigeon post, too. Really brings it home, doesn't it? How everything can be snatched away from you just like that. 
Indeed. Makes you thankful for what you've got. Makes you want to hang on to it, too. I'm sorry, Basil. For what? I know this probably sounds silly, and you're going to be cross with me, but... I've changed my mind. I'm not going for that big new house and brand new shop. I'm sticking with what I've got, and uh, as I said, I'm going to be thankful for it too. So, if you could drop my deeds back, I'd be very grateful. That store's hardly my responsibility, Sergeant. No, no, I'm aware of that. Well, lots of people have access to it. And I'll be talking to each and every one of them to find out if they've seen anything unusual lately. Unusual? Yes. People lurking nearby. People who shouldn't be there. Anything suspicious, really. Actually, I was going to mention that. Mention what? Well, I did see two men. Dav and Arled, I believe they're called. Around the store a couple of days ago. Running away from it, in fact. And I did an inventory afterwards, and there was actually a, some dynamite missing as well. A four, in fact. You were going to mention it. What? Yes. Why didn't you then? Well, I, Slipped I, your I... mind, did it? Better things to do, is it? It was going to be in my report. And the little matter of explosives being stolen from your store didn't strike you as being serious enough to inform the police. Only it sounds pretty serious to me. And I'm sure you'd feel the same if you'd seen a man die because some lunatic went to let the whole lot off! Arled Williams and Dav Jones, was it? Yes. And you'd be willing to identify them? Yes. I'd better go and see them, then. I'll be back for your formal statement later on. Yes, uh, Dr. Robert Thomas. But, so that means he left your practice, what, just over a month ago? Huh? I, I'm sorry, what do you mean he didn't leave exactly? Uh-huh. Uh. What kind of disciplinary matter was it? Mega! What's wrong? It's all gone wrong. What? I have to leave now. I just can't stay here. Robert, what on earth is going on? Meet me at the train station. Look, I've got you, I've got you a ticket. Please, Megan, don't, don't let me down too. Sean, listen, I understand, really, I do. This has all been such a shock, and for me too. I obviously didn't know Owen anywhere near as well as you and the rest of the village, but I've lost people too, people close to me. My dear sweet wife, for one. Well, as you know. So, I know now's really not the time to make a decision like this. Any sort of decision, really. Look, why don't you give it 24 hours, hmm? Sleep on it. And if you still feel the same in the morning, we'll cancel everything. How does that sound? All right. 24 hours. All right. Whatever happened about that night? 
Fine's got nothing to do with those boys. We well, you know what they're like. They talk a lot. Yes, but it's, it's just a load of hot air. They're not bad boys most of the time. They're just pottering round in you. Oh, Evelyn! <laughs> So this is what they call pottering, is it? Only I call it something else. I call it sabotage. If not murder. And so will the judge. best for you. That's all this was about. Last chance, ladies and gentlemen, your very last chance. This really is it. Our offer to exchange your deeds for a deposit on a brand new house must end today. Another hour or two at the absolute most. I beg you from the bottom of my heart, don't waste this opportunity of a lifetime. Final day, don't delay. Sir, please, come, come in. So, you worked out what they are? Amphetamines, prescribed to or end by Dr. Robert Thomas. What kind of doctor prescribes amphetamines to a man with a heart condition? I rang his old surgery to find out. He was suspended over a month ago for prescription misuse. And he's done it again. He was suspended, Carmen. It's criminally negligent. And it might have a direct bearing on the cause of Owen's death, too. I need to have a word with Dr. Thomas. Well, then, for the record, do either of you two boys know what this is? Dynamite. One of the suspects immediately recognized the explosive found in his accomplice's garden shed. Look, yes, all right. We did use one stick of dynamite on the phone box. We didn't mean to. We meant to blow up the sign. But that was an accident. What about the other sticks? What other sticks? The ones you put down the mine. I suppose that was an accident too, was it? We didn't put any down the mine. Of course we didn't. We had two. We put one by the sign and left one in the bag. By the phone box. But then something went wrong with the trail we'd lit. And the next thing we knew, it was coming back towards us. So we ran. Then we realised we'd left one in the bag. With the other stick of dynamite in it. Next thing we knew... Boom. You don't believe us, do you? There's an old saying. The first rule of policing, some people say. If it looks 
like a duck. And if it quacks like a duck, chances are that it's a... Is it a duck? And you two boys look like a pair of dead ducks to me. Oh, oh wait, 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 wait. Why would we do it, Constable? Why, Sergeant Dawkins? We, we're on the side of the working man. Why would we blow up the mine? How would we even get down there to plant the bomb? You donkey. Oh, yes. Well, it's perfect for a family of your size. A lovely spot. One of the best, if not the very best. Excuse me, Lex. That cop has been sniffing round. Of course he has. A serious crime has been committed. He's on to us. I'm sure he is. Did you say what I told you to say? Of course I did. That you saw Davin Allard running away from the dynamite store? Yes. What happened? Well, he went off to investigate. Perfect. Now, will you stop panicking? Everything's going to be fine. Have you heard? Heard what, Sean? The mine. What about it? It wasn't a collapse. It was deliberate. Good heaven. Sabotage. Really? Who would do such a thing? Dav and Alid. Really? Oh, Emily's already arrested them. They're in the police station with him now. Prem! I need to talk to you. In confidence. Sorry, my girl, it'll have to wait. I have to see Dr. Thomas. Actually, this is about Dr. Thomas. He just came to see me. He was in a terrible state. He kept on saying how he had to leave, go away, how everything had gone wrong. What did he mean? I couldn't get anything else out of him, but he dropped these. He needs help, Prem. I know he does. He's in trouble. Big trouble. I wouldn't ask otherwise. Do you know where he is? No. But I know where he will be, though. Why just two sticks? What? You took just two sticks of dynamite. That's what you said. Why not more? You were there. You were in the store. You must have felt like kids in a sweet shop. We, we, we didn't have time to get any more. That inspector. Ah, uh, Gra Graham. He suddenly appeared. Uh, out of nowhere. We didn't expect anyone from the mine to be there. Not at that time of night. So we just grabbed what we could and run. Mrs. Sharma. Carmony. I, uh... I was wondering if you had a chance to discuss the job offer with your husband. Only, if there are any questions you'd like answering, I'm sure I could help. Actually, I did have one question, Mr. Thomas. Far away. Are you aware that your brother's been prescribing unlicensed and harmful prescriptions? That's a very serious allegation, Mrs. Sharma. I have evidence. Perhaps you'd like to discuss this somewhere less public. So you really didn't know? Totally shocked. If it's true, of course. There was no doubt, according to his last practice. Oh, well, there we are, his last practice. What do you mean? I know Robert's methods did sometimes attract rather a lot of, how shall I put this, professional jealousy. Let me show you the pills your brother prescribed, Mr. Thomas. I doubt they'd provoke too much in the way of professional jealousy.
Dr. Thomas! Dr. Sharma? You prescribed amphetamines to warn Griffiths. Griffiths was my patient. That's confidential. That medication was unlicensed and therefore illegal. And I will be listing it as a contributory factor when I complete the death certificate. What's gone wrong, Dr. Thomas? That's what you told Megan, wasn't it? That... You had to get away, that you couldn't stay here any longer. Was it just to do with Owen's death, or is there something else? I had nothing to do with that. With what? That bomb. So who did? Who did, Dr. Thomas? Tell him, Robert. If you know anything about what happened, tell Prem. I could have lost my husband last night. The father of the baby I'm carrying. Please, Robert, tell him. Bethel would never have done anything like that. Not if he'd have known people's lives were at risk. But he did, didn't he? I assure you, Mrs. Sharma, Robert is a man of integrity. They would have had no reason to lie. I'm not saying they're lying, Mrs. Sharma. But I think we should keep this between ourselves for the moment. Most unusual, Mrs. Sharma, most unusual. I'll make some inquiries. I don't pretend to understand the medical side of things, of course, but I will get to the bottom of this. You have my word on that. Dan! What is that? Mr. Thomas's file. How did you get that? I just took it from his briefcase. Dan, you mustn't do that. But look. There's some things in you I don't understand. I was liaison with the rescue people. You, you hear of my statement, yes? No. I've come to ask you a couple of questions. First, are you absolutely sure that four sticks of dynamite are missing? Four? Because Dav and Alet insist that they only took two. Second question. Perhaps you can explain where this little lot came from. You got a house, Deeds? Have you got my money? <laughs> I didn't sign everyone, but uh, there should be enough there to serve your purposes. Oh, the mine isn't going to be a problem either. Imagine, a few short months, and all of this will be gone. No more slack heaps, no miserable little terraces, just... Is this some kind of joke? What? Because if it is, it really isn't a good idea. Deliver me enough land to build my motorway, that's what I said. <laughs> and I have. No, you've delivered me the results of a urine sample 
for a Miss Gina Jones. What? Sorry. There's been a bit of a mix-up. These are Roberts. My brother. He's a doctor. I'll just pop back and get the right file. We'll wait here for you, Basil, for one hour. Then we'll come and find you, ready or not. Mr. Thomas. Friend. I'm looking for Basil. According to his brother, he was responsible for the mine explosion, though I'm no clearer as to why. This may explain things. Where did you get this? Dan found it in Mr. Thomas's briefcase. There is no new town. There never was. Find Emlyn. Tell him about this. Tell him to get Robert. He's at the station with Megan. I've got to find Basil. So? What are you going to do? I don't know. There isn't a lot to stay for. Not now. You're going to run away. Again. Pretend all this never happened. what you normally do? Or are you going to face up to things for once? Tell my husband what you just told me and Prem. Do you know what you're asking? Yes. Do you think testify against my brother? I'm saying... Tell the truth. ruined. Not for some bogus new town promise, but for a motorway. A grey open wound across this beautiful countryside. It's called progress, Dr. Sharma. And anyway, that's just a proposal. A feasibility exercise, nothing more. It doesn't mean it's actually going to happen. I'm sure it isn't now. But that was never the point, was it? You were merely deceiving everybody out of their deeds so that you could line your own pockets. No. I've been inviting people to invest. And every investment always carries with it a certain element of risk, of course. You also tried to make sure that the coal board would have no objections by sabotaging the mine. Oh, Dr. Sharma, really? From what I hear, you came pretty close. And who said that? Actually, I was hoping that you would display some spark of common decency and admit that yourself. No one said it. And no one will. And you know why? Because this is all nonsense. Stuff and nonsense. And it certainly won't stand up in a court of law. On its own, perhaps not. But with a credible witness, like your brother. Robert? 
<laughs> Dr. Sharma, Robert hardly knows what day it is most of the time. He's already told me your part in this. Yes, well, he's sick. He's an addict. He doesn't know what he's saying. You really think a judge will take his word over mine? A friend of mine died last night at your hands. Rubbish. Oh, you might not have been there, but he died because of you nonetheless. I'm not a murderer. So you are going nowhere until a court decides whether to believe you or your brother. I am leaving, Dr. Sharma, right now. No, Mr. Thomas, you are not. Very well. Let's see. If this changes your mind. No, it doesn't. Do you think I won't use it? Because I will. You really don't believe me? No, I do believe you. That's the whole point. What? You said so yourself. Stay where you are. Just a moment ago. I'm warning you. You said you weren't a murderer. And I believe you. Put that down, Mr. Thomas. I said put it down! For God's sake, Basil. Enough. Brother. Before the presentation, I need to propose a few toasts. Oh. Firstly, to myself. <laughs> well, if I hadn't put down those little crosses, you would not be having a free drink this evening. Oh. <laughs> Just do one. Oh. <laughs> next, Sean, who graciously agreed to be my next of oh. Hey, hey boy, for telephone purposes only. <laughs> And uh, she will be taking charge of the presentation tonight. <laughs> but um, more importantly, much more important, it's great to see Dan here. Yes. Yeah. Dad was a good man. Yeah. And remember, Dan, we're all family here. Yeah. 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 Oh, me gun, Emily. Hey, hey, grab a drink. No, not for me, thanks. Oh, come on. Megan, it's a celebration. No, just to be on the safe side. Safe side? I'm pregnant. <gasps> I'm going to be a dad. <laughs> <laughs> the third toast. Megan, Emily, and Megan is up the door. <laughs> You're missing all the fun in the pub. I'm having a lot <laughs> more fun right here. <laughs> Aren't you going to answer that? Are you kidding? It might be your mother. It might be an emergency. Go on, I'll still be here. If it is your mother, I'm going to tell her that you've left me for that Maharishi. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Dr. Prem Sharma speaking. Oh, yes, yes. How can I help you? I I'm sorry. Could you say that again, please? Attention! Attention! We have now come to the main event of the evening, friends. <laughs> and I pass over the rest of the proceedings to my great friend, Lady Sean <laughs> Trevelyan Davis. <laughs> <laughs> Photographer from the papers here now. So, in the absence of a pool's official, we thought it best I do the honours. <laughs> Letter. 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 <laughs> 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 Dear Mr. Joseph, <laughs> congratulations on your win! <laughs> I have great pleasure in announcing that the jackpot this week was ten thousand pounds! a successful winning syndicate with 1,000 members, that makes you a share ten pounds. Ten pounds. Ten. Don't spend it all at once, though, can you? <laughs> <laughs> well, at least I can buy everyone a drink. Yeah. <laughs> Because your bar tab is at least twelve pounds already. <laughs> Can anyone lend me a few quids? <laughs> <laughs> Should go double or quits, Kat. Stick it all on England to win the World Cup next month. Wouldn't waste my money, boy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Everything all right? I've just been offered a job. A job? Where? I think. Give me several options, but all of them rather a long way away from here. Leave Trevelyan. What did you say? I said I'd tell them in the morning. But I had to discuss it with my wife first. So, let's discuss it, shall we? More original British drama about life's turning points. The new series of Moving On is now available on BBC iPlayer and also here on BBC One every day next week at 2.15. Next this afternoon, John Barrowman's poised to play Pressure Pat. Then I saw her face Now I'm